In sintesi, le persone che sono troppo famose di potere portano solamente distruzione. Lord De Rosso's Castle Siege Painting. Such a tragic tale. Vi fa riflettere un po', vero, sull'ortodossia? A me leggermente. Comunque, in sintesi, gli invasati che hanno preso il potere eh, si sono ubriacati di quest'ultimo e dicono Ah, giusto, noi siamo più potenti di voi, vi schiacciamo, boom, e li hanno uccisi tutti quanti. È una cosa bruttissima, che per me è successa anche nella vita reale. Questo, questo gioco mh, fa molti riferimenti ad alcune cose. Alcune cose non posso dirle perché sarebbero politiche, io non voglio parlare di politica in, nei miei video, a, a parte che non ci capisco assolutamente niente di politica, ma non è quello la cosa principale. Ok, cosa fanno i guanti nanici? Se non erro aumentano... Devo azzeccarci la destrezza. Eeeh, aumentano la destrezza di 20. In questo castello troverete un casino... Un casino intanto tanto. Un casino di roba che aumenta tanta, tante, tante statistiche. Abbiamo trovato i guanti nanici, abbiamo trovato... Uh, I calzari di Hermes. Attualmente non servono a nessuno ovviamente, però... Ok. Ok, perfetto, si può andare avanti. Via... Allora, qui c'è un'altra cosa, mi sa che qua si va avanti? Mi sembra di... Sì, ok, quindi esploriamo un attimo che qua c'è un tesoro che devo prendere. Lo so, questa parte è piena di storia e avete visto solamente tre battaglie, tre, quattro battaglie, ipercubitiere. Um, però, ripeto, attualmente mi conviene fare solamente la storia, altrimenti questo video durerebbe troppo tempo e dovrei dividere la metà, cosa che non voglio fare. Ipercubitiere aumenta di 20 punti d'attacco. Quindi, se volete qualcuno con molto attacco... Ad esempio, qualunque persona, adesso io, mh, non lo so, metto lei, anche se lei non attacca, però almeno è più potente così. Um, avete ipercubitiere, più forte di cubitiere del potere, quindi volendo potete appunto, appunto, potete appunto usarlo. Nessuno ve lo vieta ovviamente, qua ovviamente ci sono simpoli, vamp simpoli vampirici, indovinate un po' cosa faremo dopo, insomma. Betrayed by the precepts I believed in, was I not bitter? Robbed of my beloved homeland, my dearest of kin, my people, slain. Amid such despair, was I content to simply welcome death? Nay, I heard a voice. Accept me, and I shall grant life everlasting. Though it shall be filled with grief, Thou shalt have all eternity to wreak vengeance upon thine enemies. Did I forge a dark pact with some fiendish entity that day? Or was it a rebirth, triggered by a future me reaching back to the past? Panicked upon failing to find my body, the orthodoxy chose to denounce my family and me as ghoulish vampires. Thus have I been living in a mortal existence ever since. Then the name Vampire Castle is... A lie that has been perpetrated by the Orthodoxy for some 2,400 years. Though it is true I am immortal, I am no vampire. I find the smell of blood too revolting to ever drink it. Having said that, i have done not to quell the rumors. In truth, I endeavored to embellish them. My ability to transform myself into a bat and grow these fangs are the fruits of many years. Long, long years of effort. Tell me, O oh Vestal of the Wind, what does the Crystal Orthodoxy have to say about the passing of the first Grand Patriarch? 
He chose the second Grand Patriarch and prayed for peace and the well-being of the faithful as he passed peacefully from this world. <laughs> passed peacefully from this world, you say? I know the truth to be far different. What do you mean? The first Grand Patriarch was assassinated, along with his Archbishop, the man who had been my bane. The assassin himself tells you this. There is no other truth. That was when I forsook this land. Soon after, sightings of the vampire Lester de Rosso began to crop up throughout the world. I became a veritable Duke of Darkness, forging ties with those bearing hatred toward the Orthodoxy and those it had oppressed. I was the enemy of man, the hated and feared vampire. But more than that, I was known as the arch enemy of the Orthodoxy. And after some 500 years, a fateful encounter with one whom you all know well. No, let us leave the matter for another time. The portrait depicting Lord De Rosso's immortality. He was granted everlasting life. He can't ever die. Sapete, c'è una certa differenza tra vita eterna e immortalità. Eh, comunque non ve ne parlerò adesso perché potrei sbagliarmi. In ogni caso, sì, Lester De Rosso è un... Eh, Semi vampiro, chiamiamolo così Perché non è un vampiro come ha detto lui Infatti lui odia il sapore del sangue E anche l'odore a quanto pare Anche se non sento molto odore nel sangue Ma forse perché io ho il naso tappato praticamente Nel 90% delle volte eh, Quando mi esce il sangue dal naso appunto Per esempio non sento l'odore del sangue Ma <ride> lasciamo perdere In sintesi um... De Rosso è un assassino Armille magiche Armille? Cosa diamine è? Armille Aumenta la mente, mo di molto Di 20 probabilmente, sì Tutti questi oggetti, come ho già detto, aumentano di 20 mh, Alcune statistiche Probabilmente sono alcuni oggetti che non si possono neanche comprare E se si possono comprare, eh, buon per voi Perché io non so dove si comprano Almeno non mi sono informato su questa cosa Attualmente, intendo Allora, stiamo facendo un giro bello lungo Ma voglio prendere tutto Ah, ok, ho mancato un tesoro E quindi torniamo indietro Um, ho delle mie teorie su uh, chi sia l'entità oscura, probabile, probabile entità oscura, che ha dato vita eterna a... Ok, oh, perfetto, anche questo mi serve tanto. Um, a vita eterna appunto a De Rosso. Ma non serve adesso parlarne perché... perché non serve. Dunque, cosa fa quello? Quel coso là? È utilissimo per Agnes. Quel... Um, come si chiama? Quel tiara. Cosa fa la tiara di Lamia? Aumenta, cioè rende il portatore immune a malia Ed è più forte, aumenta la difesa, aumenta l'attacco magico, aumenta la difesa magica E dato che mi serve più difesa che attacco La tiara di Lamia è l'ideale per i vostri mh, healer in sintesi Potrebbe andare bene anche su Edia Ma Edia eventualmente può attaccare, nessuno glielo vieta ehm, Invece no, eh, Agnes, no, dato che Agnes non attacca mai, è solo supporter eh, Conviene darlo a lei, almeno secondo il mio modesto parere Conviene darlo a lei Battlefield landscape? It represents the long and hard fought war between the Orthodoxy and we denizens of darkness. For 500 years, my thirst for vengeance remained unsated. Uh. It had also been 500 years since the Orthodoxy had been founded. The world was in the midst of an age of seafaring and piracy. Compared to the great exchange of ideas and information, the once hallowed orthodoxy began to lose its luster. The authority of the Grand Patriarch and the orthodoxy itself began to wane. Fearing irrelevancy, the Grand Patriarchy acted rashly to regain its authority. This led to the unusual decision to select a commoner, the gifted young Yulyana, for an important task. Yulyana? 
say, Juliana? Yes, indeed. At age 20, the young Juliana became High Inquisitor of the Crystal Orthodoxy. <laughs> it's hard to believe he ever was young. <laughs> it was no laughing matter, for there was no one more skilled at rooting out enemies of the faith than he. The shadowy ones, those who had been working against the Orthodoxy, were crushed by the host he led. In the several decades that saw him age, I cannot count the number of times we have crossed swords, he and I. In the great battle waged on the Karka Plain, the might of our clashing forces rent the very earth into a vast rift. You mean the rift under Ison Bridge? In the battle at the foot of Mount Fragmentum, our armies smoked the mountain to its very roots. So that's how that ravine was created. And in the battle fought on the Harina Plain, the once fertile earth was reduced to desolation. The loss of that fertile plain is believed to have ushered in the downfall of the Harina Dynasty. To think any sort of battle could change the face of the earth so. We fought our final battle 1800 years ago on the Norende Heights in the land of Caldisla. The Norende Heights? That's where the Great Chasm opened up! In the end, Yulyana, High Inquisitor of the Crystal Orthodoxy, utterly defeated me. Lord De Rosso, leader of the Shadows. You were defeated? But you're here with us today! Yes, well, there was more to that final battle than meets the eye. You see, I ceded the glory of victory to young Yulyana that day. I say young in my reckoning, for he was already 100 then. Yulyana returned triumphantly to Eternia with what he claimed to be my remains. What he brought them was not human. And when the Templar attacked the Head Temple 15 years past, it is said they found my tomb deep underground. Ever dreading the darkness and my return, the Orthodoxy kept those duplicitous remains under Arcane Seal for over 1,000 years. Hmm. Tis a tale replete with irony, is it not? Lord De Rosso's war landscape. It's hard to imagine a war lasting 500 years. Dunque, Giuliana è praticamente vecchio meno di De Rosso a quanto pare ed è abbastanza strana la cosa, considerando che Giuliana io lo considero uno dei ve più vecchi di tutti quanti Comunque dovrebbe comunque Comunque dovrebbe comunque Dovrebbe comunque avere circa 2000 anni Ah giusto Tenete bene stretti dei Megalisir Che dopo vi spiegherò alcune cose Sui Megalisir stessi Adesso però non serve uh, Spiegarlo intendo Ok ci sono zero tesori quindi Posso sbrigarmi subito Perché non so questo video quando sta durando Ma sono deciso a, a Sono deciso a A Uploadare tutto quanto insieme Via Yes, indeed. No one would mistake such a man for young now. Having put down the blood-sucking Lord De Rosso, bane of the Crystal Orthodoxy, he became the first ever commoner to become an archbishop. Perhaps it was a small honor they threw his way, for he was already 101 years old and would not long count among the living. That makes it sound... despicable. Agreed. The truth is, however, that was when Yulyana's plot was at its most clever. The Sage's plot? What was he plotting? He was taking measures to separate you Vestals and the Faithful among the people from the Orthodoxy's corruption. After serving some 80 years, he had witnessed firsthand how corrupt the institution had become. Should nothing be done, 
It would not be long before the putrid poison would do harm to the most innocent of the faith. So it was he vowed to rid the orthodoxy of the source of this poison, the concentration of power. But how? For the great feat of defeating me, Yulyana had been made archbishop, but in name only. But such was not key to his plot. Timing was the key. The proper time to separate the Vestals and the faithful from the orthodoxy. And just what timing would that be? The great upthrust of the Eternian Highlands. At the time, the Highlands were not so formidable as they are today. But a colossal movement of earth and rock thrust the highlands to lofty heights, thereby isolating Eternia from the world. Hold on a moment. He was waiting for the earth to move? How could he have known when such an event would take place? I shall tell you in time. For now I will say this. Yulyana bided his time till the orthodoxy was cut off from the world. And at last, it happened. The Highlands ringing Eternia did thrust up to about half its height today. The orthodoxy ruled Eternia now found itself completely isolated, for this was an age preceding the airship. And while the Earth Crystal remained in their keep, control of the crystals of fire, water, and wind was returned to their respective temples. This what you believe to be the true form of crystallism is the fruit of Yulyana's efforts. That was the sage's doing? I won't ever call him a miserable old lech again. Sage? A portrait of the Archbishop. He looks just as he does today, save for that elaborate attire. Bene, quindi non solo Giuliana è un vecchio decrepito bavoso, tra virgolette, ma è anche colui che ha dato inizio all'attuale fede del cristallismo. Uh, ok, abbiamo finito. Uh, vi spiego. Lì c'è una certa cosa da fare, ovviamente come avete potuto ben intuire, uh, c'è un certo... C'è, eccolo là, del rosso è là dietro Prima però dobbiamo vedere l'ultimo quadro E poi c'è il punto di salvataggio, quindi staccherò la parte What is that glowing jewel-like object? I could swear I've seen something like that before I believe you have seen a similar sight countless times It is known as an asterisk An asterisk? As in those objects we possess? Yes, indeed. The second stage in Yulyana's plot against the Orthodoxy's authority was to deprive them of the power to grant vocations. Grant vocations? I'm afraid I don't follow. Before Yulyana intervened, special approval was required to change vocations within the Crystal Orthodoxy. In this way, the institution grew rich through fat profits they called alms. Oh, so the orthodoxy cornered the job market and the fees to participate therein? In layman's terms, yes. But Yulyana exposed this fact before the reigning Grand Patriarch. It was then that Yulyana approached panicked high officials and the Grand Patriarch himself with a proposal of pure genius. He showed them a stone known as an asterisk, saying the granting of vocation should be based on it, overseen by the orthodoxy. Those who sought such vocations would apply to the orthodoxy and pay a fair price. Anyone with the means to pay could thus learn a new job. That's no different from the old system where people had to pay alms. No different indeed. But the Grand Patriarch and his officials had not but the material profits of the orthodoxy in mind. Hence, they accepted Yulyana's proposal without question, even appointing him to the important position of overseeing the new asterisk system. I fail to see how that really changed anything. Well... 
it did far more than you would guess. For he was the only one who knew how to make the asterisk stones. Why that wily old fox? So it was Yuliana robbed the orthodoxy of its authority to grant jobs and took it for himself. What of the orthodoxy's profits? Wouldn't they demand Yuliana transfer the proceeds to their coffers? Yuliana was long gone. Abandoning the seat of Archbishop, he fled with his knowledge of the asterisk craft. He also took arms and armor the orthodoxy had seized from around the world. Items of such power that their use was forbidden. He took them all and sealed them away in a hidden location. They now lie secreted away against the day the Orthodoxy's tyranny or some other impending doom threatens the people. He then hid himself in Yuliana Woods until those who knew him reached the end of their natural lives. But that did not take long, for I led the forces of the shadows to ensure their swift demise. I had always believed the Crystal Orthodoxy required naught but the Crystals, the Vestals, and the Faithful. With the institution free of corruption, I returned to my homeland of Eternia after a 700-year absence. Where my family's castle once stood, I built a fortress of ice from whence I have been watching over the Orthodoxy's head temple. Meanwhile, Yuliana retired to that land to tend to the Vestals, but you know of that better than I. Say, Yuliana. The asterisk painting. Say, Yuliana created asterisks to chip away at the Crystal Orthodoxy's authority. Non penso di dover spiegare assolutamente nulla, si capisce tutto quanto dalla spiegazione che Tiz due secondi fa ha dato. Ultimo tesoro del castello. Bacchetta di Lilith. Questa roba, se non erro, è abbastanza potente. Adesso lo controlliamo. Questo è il bastone, noi abbiamo le bacchette però adesso. La bacchetta di Lilith dov'è? Eccola qua. Uh, sì, Lilith. Cos'è che roba è? Da dove l'ho rubata? Ah è vero questa qua si ruba da um, Dai maghi del ducato La mazza martello ecco perché ne ho tre Comunque la bacchetta di Lilith, di Lilith ap Lancia Aspir su un bersaglio Se utilizzata attiva l'aspetto Aspir Aspir assorbe i punti magia Se non erro il 10% Dei punti magia ehm, eh, All'avversario Ad esempio se noi infl infliggiamo 100 di danno Loro ci danno 10 punti magia indietro Con attacchi magici penso Non ne ho idea Adesso controlliamo Aspir com'è Uh, Aspir Qualunque Va bene Aspir uh, Astare punti magia dal bersaglio Se lo dite uh, Ok Perfetto In sintesi Anche con le magie Dovrebbe funzionare Comunque uh, Attualmente Non ho nient'altro da dire È finita la parte E quindi Nella prossima parte Di Bravely Default Andiamo a parlare con Lester De Rosso Ancora è il dipinto degli asterischi Si vede leggermente meglio da qua Quindi alla prossima, è un video abbastanza lungo, lo so, è molta storia, ma fidatevi che ne vale la pena per capire tutto quello che succederà dopo. Alla prossima!